The sim racing world was a very different place back in late 2015 when Sim Experience released the AccuForce Pro Direct Drive wheel. Back then, direct drive wheels were isolated to those who were not only early adapters in new technology, but to those who could afford it. Back then, all direct drive wheels were over $1,000, and in most cases, well over $1,000, really leading it to being a very small movement. But like any new technology, time allows for processes to be improved, economy of scales to be applied, and for the manufacturers to decrease the cost of manufacturing and pass those savings on to the customers. Fast forward to today, and now the direct drive wheel question that it was in 2015 isn't a question anymore. Pretty much most folks in the sim racing community are sold on a direct drive technology, and now they're just waiting for the prices to decrease to a level that won't require them to sign divorce papers before they go out and buy one. This brings us to the Sim Experience AccuForce Pro V2. Thanks to significant reductions in manufacturing costs, Sim Experience have lopped $450 off the price of the original AccuForce Pro, with the V2 coming in at $1,299. But does it take away from the quality of the original AccuForce Pro? And was the original AccuForce Pro even worth it, even at the now reduced price? That's what we're here to find out with our review of the Sim Experience AccuForce Pro V2 Direct Drive Wheel. Racing simulator provided by Next Level Racing and their new 2-in-1 F1 GT cockpit. Whether you like the upright GT seating position or low slung F1 seating position, the F1 GT has you covered at a price that won't break the bank. Learn more at nextlevelracing.com. The first pro of the AccuForce Pro V2 wheel is its build quality. The AccuForce Pro V1 had very good build quality. The wheel plus the wheel button box, wheel base, and controller box all sported quality materials and design. For the V2, the wheel and controller box carry over. But the difference between the V1 and the V2 is the wheel base. The heavy duty machine metal casing on the V1 base was very expensive to manufacture. For the V2, Sim Experience went back to the drawing board and designed a less expensive multi-piece casing. But does the new casing cheapen the V2? Not at all. While the V1 wheelbase casing was very nice, the V2 solution is also nice. It has good sidewall thickness and nicely designed cooling slots on top. Plus, some of the best design cues from the V1, including the carbon fiber front panel and 3D chrome Sim Experience logo on the side, carry over to the V2. Possibly best of all, the V2 wheelbase is shorter, which can only help when you're trying to get all the elements of your rig in the exact right place. As for the carryovers, the wheel and control box, they have no changes, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The controller box is still enclosed in quality plastics and has four mounting holes designed for the Sim Experience Stage Series simulators, but you can also get creative with the mounting. I chose to wall mount the controller for myself for a clean look. The rigid wheel comes in at a healthy 32 centimeters in diameter and is wrapped in quality feeling Alcantara with soft but supportive padding underneath. The wheel mounts to the wheel button box, which features four button clusters, plus the horn, which works as a button, paddle shifters, quick release, and USB cord to power the buttons and USB port on the back of the wheel. The button box is made out of thick sidewall plastic, and the buttons have a good click, but I wouldn't say it's as nice as a similarly designed and priced Fnatic Xbox One Universal Hub. The bottom button clusters are locked into place, but the top two can be rotated up for your preference or to fit other wheels between 28 and 35 centimeters in diameter. In total, there are 13 buttons between the four button boxes, and as mentioned earlier, the horn button in the middle of the wheel featuring the AF logo. It isn't the most satisfying button to press, but it does come in handy for in-game functions like pausing the game. The carbon fiber paddle shifters of the wheel button box look and feel very nice. They can be adjusted in and out to fit the diameter of the wheel, plus have two bolts that adjust the shifter's throw and engagement point. The automotive grade quick release is as heavy duty as it sounds and locks into place with an assuring click. The six hole bolt pattern of the AccuForce wheel button box means that you can mount other wheels to it such as the Fnatic Forza Motorsport wheel that uses the same 70 millimeter hole pattern. 
There are also plenty of aftermarket solutions, whether it's a wheel designed for the AccuForce or an adapter that allows you to mount other wheel brands to it. Our next pro is tuning. And while the first thing that might pop in your head when you hear AccuForce is direct drive, and don't worry, we're getting there, there's another feature that differentiates it from the Logitechs, Thrustmasters, and Fanatics of the world, and that's tuning. Unlike those wheels that have some tuning options, degrees of rotation, force feedback, centering spring, dead zone, dampening, etc. If you want to adjust these settings per game or even car, you have to do this every time you want to drive that game or car. This is not the case with the AccuForce Pro V2. This is because the AccuForce Pro V2 hardware is supported with Sim Experience's Sim Commander 4 software. We'll deep dive into the pros and cons of Sim Commander 4 later, but for now, let's go and take the 30,000 foot view of it. Sim Commander 4 is the hub for the AccuForce. It's where you adjust all the wheels effects and even launch the games from it. When you first start using Sim Commander 4, you can have it auto search your PC for all your games and it comes up with the default profile for each game on your PC. These profiles can, pretty much, be endlessly tuned with many different effects to choose from. The nice thing is not only can you tune each game profile differently, but you can add or duplicate a profile you already have and tune it for a specific car or type of car. Then anytime you want to drive that game or car, click on the profile and off you go racing with your custom tune. It's a really cool and important feature that differentiates the AccuForce from other wheels. Now for the term that probably pops into your head when you hear AccuForce, direct drive. What is direct drive? Well, before we talk about that, let's go ahead and have a refresher on other drive mechanisms. The vast majority of sim racers use gear and or belt driven wheels. Why do a company use a gear or belt system to deliver power instead of connecting the wheel directly to a motor? Because the motors they use aren't strong enough for that. Gears and or belts are needed to boost the strength of the motors. Why don't they use stronger motors? Cost. There's a reason why direct drive wheels start at around $1,000 and go up. The industrial servo drive motors aren't cheap. So with that said, what's the drawbacks to using a gear and or belt drive system? Friction, slip, and latency. When you turn a belt driven wheel, and especially a gear driven wheel, you can feel the gears and or belt. There's friction and the smoothness of the wheel rotation is negatively impacted. There's also an opportunity for the belt to slip when things get hot and heavy inside the wheel, causing force feedback to be lost. As for latency, when the motor's movement has to be translated via gears and or a belt, it takes time. The more you can reduce the latency between what the game is doing and what your hands are feeling, the more in control you can be. These issues, obviously, do not exist with a direct drive wheel. So since the AccuForce Pro V2 has a 13Nm low inertia servo motor directly connected to the wheel, that means it has super strong force feedback and was really smooth right out of the box, right? Well, yes and no. Out of the box, the wheel was strong, but it wasn't as smooth as Darren's V1 that I had driven many times. It also had some oscillations down the straightaway, which drive me nuts on any wheel. So what gives? Well, remember when I talked about tuning earlier? Well, there's a little bit more to it, and it's important. Really important. While there are endless ways to tune the wheel, you can divide it up into three overarching categories. Device settings, game force feedback, and steering feedback foundation. I started my tuning with device settings. Device settings is essentially your backup settings if you forget to fire up the game via Sim Commander. If you just use the device settings, then the AccuForce is like any other wheel, no custom profiles per game or per car. To start, I turned all the sliders off then went through and adjusted each slider one at a time to see what impact each effect had until I was happy with the feel of the car. I primarily tuned for the iRacing Mercedes AMG GT3 at Mid-Ohio, but I also drove other cars and games with it afterwards to make sure they felt okay. Once I was done tuning the device settings, I was really happy with the wheel when paired with the Mercedes and iRacing. I thought it felt really great. But driving other cars in iRacing and other cars in different sims, I could tell that there was still more performance to be gained. So I decided to jump into the custom profiles. As we noted earlier, the custom game profiles, or even custom car profiles, is where the magic happens. 
After a lot of time flailing around, trying to understand every little nook and cranny of Sim Commander 4, more on that later, I eventually found a system that worked for me. Go to Default Game Profile, click Enable In-Game On-Screen Display, more on that later. Go to Output Mixer Device Settings, and change degrees of rotation to your usual preference. Mine is 540 degrees. Now I have a default profile that I'm ready to edit. Now I press Duplicate and go to work. By default, there are 10 effects listed on the default output mixer. You can even add more via the Add button, but for me, I started simple. I turned Game Force Feedback, Game Force Feedback Smoothing, Stationary and Moving Dynamic Oscillation Control on, and that's it. Then I drove. After I drove for a bit, I got an idea of what I had. I would stop on track, move my mouse towards the bottom of the screen, pull up Sim Commander in-game on-screen display that we enabled, and start adjusting sliders. Next, I would exit the game and go to the output tuning wizard, select my best lap, have it adjust my game force feedback and steering feedback foundation based off of the telemetry from the game. This feature is called auto tuning and takes telemetry from the game and creates a profile that shouldn't induce clipping. Now I go back into the game and play with the sliders more to fine tune it. After I got the wheel feeling as good as I thought I could, I turn off Game Force Feedback and turn on Steering Feedback Foundation and go make laps and further adjust settings while in game. What does this process yield? Well first, more often than not, I prefer the Steering Feedback Foundation that only takes the pure telemetry from the game over the Game Force Feedback that adds effects on top of it to make lesser wheels feel more believable. Second, the AccuForce Pro V2 is very good. The 13 Newton meter motor driving the force feedback is plenty strong. Quite frankly, on most cars, it doesn't even get fully utilized because power steering is a thing. But if you insist on running a heavy wheel, you can knock yourself out. But what is strength if it isn't smooth? The AccuForce is smooth. Now, can it not be smooth? Sure, as I mentioned earlier, when I first got the wheel, it wasn't very smooth feeling. But if you properly tune it, you can definitely make it smooth. You really can't beat the removal of a belt. While belt-driven wheels have gotten pretty smooth for their design recently, there's just always going to be a point of friction and slipping. This is not the case with the direct drive AccuForce. As I mentioned earlier, and in other reviews, wheel oscillations drive me nuts. I feel like realism is broken when the wheel is vibrating away on pit road or going down the straights. That's where the AccuForce comes in. Stationary dynamic oscillation control made it so the wheel never moved on pit road. Moving dynamic oscillation control eliminated oscillations on the straights, or at the very least, significantly decreased them to a point where you really had to be paying attention to feel them. We talk a lot about force feedback strength, smoothness, and even sometimes oscillations when we're reviewing other wheels here on the channel. But there's one more thing that I want to talk about that we see with the AccuForce more so than other wheels, and that's fidelity. Like I said earlier, some people lose their mind with direct drive wheels over servo motor strength. I don't play that pissing match. What impresses me possibly most of all with direct drive AccuForce is the fidelity. The wheel just picks up everything on the track so well, even when tuning the smoothing up. If the track has a bump or dip or ripple, the wheel picks it up. It's just a level of surface detail that traditional non-direct drive wheels do not possess. Another characteristic that really impressed me is the feel over rumble strips. In most wheels, a little vibration motor spins and it kind of feels like the wheel is rattling itself to pieces. In the AccuForce, the vibration feels deep and realistic, not just a bolted on afterthought. For testing, I created multiple profiles for multiple games and the wheel always felt really good. As stated earlier, I preferred foundation over game force feedback a majority of the time, but there were exceptions like Dirt 4 that felt similar with both, and F1 2017 where the profile wasn't out yet from Sim Experience, so I adjusted the device settings and was able to make it really feel good. But out of all the titles we tested, two really stood out, Automobilista and Raceroom. Both felt utterly fantastic with Foundation Force feedback, like I'm never coming back into the pits again, fantastic. Sim Experience worked with Sector 3 Studios on Raceroom's force feedback and it shows. Automobilista just has good force feedback and that showed as well. I wouldn't say that I didn't appreciate the quality of direct drive wheels before I received the AccuForce Pro V2 because I did drive Darren's V1 wheel quite a bit. But 
I have to say, after going back to back from quality belt driven wheels like the Thrustmaster TSPC Racer and Fnatic Club Sport Wheelbase V2.5, I came to appreciate it even more. There's just a fidelity with the AccuForce V2 that has me impressed. Driving the AccuForce is like driving a car with traditional hydraulic power steering versus a car with electric power steering. My old 95 BMW M3 had hydraulic assisted power steering and it felt great. Every little detail on the road was translated to the steering wheel. The car really spoke to you. My current car, a 2013 Volkswagen GTI, like most modern cars, has electric assisted power steering. This means while it does its best to translate the road surface to the steering wheel, there's details lost and it just feels less engaging and overall more numb. This is the best way I can sum up the difference between the direct drive AccuForce Pro V2 steering wheel and other non-direct drive wheels out there and it's a significant one. Our next pro is price. The AccuForce Your Way kit gets you the AccuForce V2 wheelbase and controller box for $899. Just add a wheel to race. The Your Way model accepts any aftermarket steering wheel that has a 6 bolt 70 mm hole pattern. Or, you could get the Your Way package and add the AccuForce wheel for $988. You would be hard pressed to drive a direct drive wheel for any less money. As for the AccuForce Pro V2 that we've been focusing on, $1,299 for the wheelbase, quick release, wheel, and wheel button box is pretty good, especially considering how it cost $1,748 not long ago. Looking at these options, three different purchasing scenarios become apparent to me. Scenario 1, you're a NASCAR fan and that's all you race. The Your Way wheel base plus AccuForce steering wheel is perfect since you don't need paddle shifters and the AccuForce wheel is very NASCAR like. Scenario 2, you aren't interested in AccuForce wheel but want a different wheel like a Formula rim. In this case, you can buy the Your Way and purchase a Formula rim from one of the many companies that have popped up make custom wheels, particularly for direct drive wheels. Or you can even buy an adapter and put other mainstream sim racing wheels on it. Scenario 3. You road race and even sometimes oval race and you want a full size wheel. Then the AccuForce Pro V2 is right for you. Now if money is real tight and you want to go the DIY route, then there is the AccuForce DIY which gets you the Your Way Sans, the V2 wheelbase casing and 6 bolt 70mm hole pattern adapter. But if you don't mind the naked motor, securing your own wheel, and coming up with a mounting solution for the base, the DIY, which does include Sim Commander 4 software, retails for $704. Again, pretty well priced. As for other purchasing options, you can buy the AccuForce button box for $400, the AccuForce quick release for $89, and the AccuForce Pro angled mounting bracket for $45. The first two don't make much sense since you would save money just buying the complete Pro versus piecemealing it together, but I do want to touch on the mounting bracket. I did need the angled mounting bracket, and I would imagine that most of you would need it too, unless your wheel deck is up pretty high, or has the ability to tilt adjust. $45 for a bracket kind of sucks, but it's at or below the industry standard for direct drive wheel mounts, so it is what it is. Our first neutral attribute of the AccuForce Pro V2 is the wheel shape. This point is highly preferential, but I wanted to make it anyway. While the round 32cm wheel on the AccuForce Pro V2 is nice, zero complaints when it comes to materials or build quality, I would prefer a 28 or 30cm formula rim. Most of the cars I drive these days use a formula rim and I like how they don't block the dashboard telemetry like the round wheel does. With that said, the round 32cm wheel is the safer choice because it can be used with all cars. Plus, there are going to be people out there who prefer it to the smaller formula rim. It's all personal preference. As we already noted, there's plenty of aftermarket rim options out there. But with that said, it would be nice to see a formula option offered from Sim Experience in the future. I have two issues with the force feedback controller that aren't big enough for the cons category, but I do want to note them. First, the fan on the controller is loud. My speakers are too loud to hear while driving, but before and after driving, it's the noisiest fan I have around my rig by a fair amount. My other annoyance are the two USB slots that the controller takes. While this may sound like splitting hairs, by the time I hook up my wheel, pedals, shifter, handbrake, button box, Oculus Rift, webcam, and keyboard, USBs become a scarce resource.
Besides noting annoyances that aren't con level worthy, the neutral category exists as the overlap between the pros and cons category. This is why Sim Commander 4 is noted as a neutral aspect of the AccuForce Pro V2. While it has many, many pros, there are enough cons to knock it down. Here are the pros for Sim Commander 4, including some that we have covered and more that we haven't. It has nearly endless customization via the tuning sliders. The Foundation Force feedback takes pure telemetry from the game and adjusts effects based off of this telemetry and works fantastically. As we talked about earlier, the in-game on-screen display makes it so you don't have to leave the game to make a number of changes. These changes include tuning your profile, changing to a different profile, and loading and editing your dashboard. The output tuning wizard auto-tunes profiles with the proper steering rack force per car if you're running in iRacing only right now. Hopefully other developers will release this information so Sim Commander can do this for those titles as well. But in terms of iRacing, it works out really well and it's very cool to see the different steering rack forces that each car has. The visual lap analyzer gives you nearly all the information you need to know about the lap. It's really helpful in tuning the profiles to ensure they aren't clipping, which you sometimes have to do even if you use the output tuning wizard because sometimes you do get a little clipping. But if you're doing custom tuning on your own without the output wizard, again, it's very handy to make sure that you aren't clipping and to get plenty of other information from the lap. It really is fantastic and I really do enjoy this feature. Launch task makes it so instead of you having to go and start up each third party software that you use for a particular game, you can automatically have them all launch when you launch the game from Sim Commander, saving you a bunch of time and making it so you never miss a third party program when you go and play your game. And lastly, Sim Commander 4 allows you to share and take custom profiles from the Sim Experience Owners Club. Are you struggling to tune a good profile? Go ahead and take someone else's profile that they've uploaded and see if it helps you out and helps give you direction on how to do more tuning yourself. Also, if you have a profile that you really like, go ahead and upload it to the owners club and help others out. This is a really neat feature and really builds a community into the AccuForce owners. So that's a lot of pros, but unfortunately there are still cons and they aren't insignificant. Sim Commander is a maze of tabs and dropdowns on top of tabs and dropdowns. You do pick up navigating it quicker than you would expect upon first look, but it still could be laid out so much better. Next, some settings are explained, but most aren't. Considering the level of detail that Sim Commander gets into, explanations are a must. Next, and this could have easily fit into the two previous cons, multiple versions of the same effect show up and it's super confusing. If you go to the effects tab in the output mixer tab, again, tabs on top of tabs, you have AccuForce steering wheel smoothing, then game force feedback smoothing. Then if you click on device settings tab, you have overall smoothing. What does it all mean? Are they the same? Are they different? How are they different? I don't know because none of it is explained. And that's not even taking into account the smoothing filter you can add to the foundation force feedback. Again, it's all just really confusing. All of this adds up to our last con, and that's the learning curve. Sim Commander 4 takes time to learn. Is it a crazy amount of time? Not necessarily. The primary points don't take too long to pick up. But if you really want to uncover every nook and cranny, the time begins adding up. As I mentioned earlier, I eventually had to stop trying to learn every inch of Sim Commander like the back of my hand and focus on a handful of effects. Then if I felt good about those settings, I would branch out from there. For these reasons, Sim Commander 4, despite being a very powerful and impressive piece of software, ends up in the neutral category. It needs changes to make unleashing all these different abilities much easier on the end user. Now let's get to the cons of the AccuForce Pro V2, and first up is the cord. The cord that runs from the wheelbase to the steering wheel is a frustration on two counts. First, the fact that there has to be a cord. Second, the connection point on the front of the wheelbase makes no sense. Besides it being an eyesore, it makes it so you have to run the cord from the wheel to the back of the wheelbase and back to the front of the wheelbase again, instead of just running it to the back of the wheelbase. In the grand scheme of things, does the cord ruin the experience? No, it doesn't even bother me when it's bumping against my leg a bit. But 
for a high-end product, the fact that you have to fuss around with a cord kind of stinks. And then there's also the fact that they went and mounted it on the front of the wheelbase, which again is an eyesore, and it just all adds up to making it a con. Also, do want to note, it is best to disconnect the wheel via the quick release when booting up the wheel for the first time of the day. That way, the cord isn't wrapped around the hub during calibration and gets stretched out. Kind of like how my cord is. There are a couple issues when it comes to mounting the AccuForce Pro V2. First, there should be more clearance given to mount the wheelbase to your simulator or to the optional angle mounts. Fitting even a low profile 90 degree Allen wrench into the tabbed in area on the wheelbase is very difficult and makes it easy to scratch up your new baby. Second, while attaching the wheelbase directly to my simulator with two bolts was no problem, that wasn't the case when I got a hold of the optional angle bracket. When I first used the angle bracket, I used the front holes on each side, but due to their location, this resulted in the back of the wheel popping up while driving. But here is where the real rub happens. To pick up the back two mounting locations, I had to drill two holes into the wheel deck of my next level racing F1 GT simulator. The F1 GT is pre-drilled to accept Logitech, Thrustmaster, and Fnatic wheels. The AccuForce angle bracket should be designed to utilize one of those hole patterns. If the angle bracket was about three quarters of an inch wider on each side, there are four holes it could have utilized. Instead, owners of non-SIM experience or non-adjustable profile simulators will most likely be forced to drill into their wheel decks. Is this the end of the world? No. But is it an extra step for the consumer that is avoidable? Yes. The Sim Experience AccuForce Pro V2 wheel is the best wheel I've ever owned. The ability to deliver really strong but ultra smooth force feedback is impressive. Not only that, but the fidelity at which it translates the on-screen road surfaces to your hands is just as impressive. The idea of skipping the developer's force feedback settings to create your own based off the telemetry that the developers allow third-party applications to have is bold, but I've become a full-fledged believer in foundation force feedback. Stripping away all the unnecessary effects that more times than not I turn off in-game anyway feels great. I really was blown away by how good titles like Automobilista and Race Room feel with foundation force feedback. You just don't realize what you've been missing until you have a wheel of this quality. The cons of the AccuForce Pro V2 do not outweigh the pros. I would like to see some, or a lot, of editing done to Sim Commander. Would like if there was one less spiral cord and USB cable included in the AccuForce box. Would like to see common mounting hole patterns used and a larger, lower RPM fan used on the controller. Lastly, an option for a different style wheel would be lovely. Maybe for the V3 or even V2.5. But for now, the AccuForce Pro V2 services as one of the best wheels you can buy in sim racing today. And now, you may even be able to afford it. Thank you for watching our review of the AccuForce Pro V2 steering wheel. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. Also check out ISRTV.com for our latest news, reviews, and our popular forums. Maybe if you're looking to pick up this wheel and need to sell your old wheel, check out our buy sell section on the forums. It's very popular and a great way to sell or buy used sim racing equipment. Also check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Click on the link, shop through Amazon, doesn't cost you a thing, but kicks back a little bit towards us. So thank you for watching Inside Sim Racing. I'm John Sable. Please take care of you and yours.